Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. First up for T&D today, we have a Help It's Again mug. I have gotten some questions as to why I have this one so much. I have more than one of them, and I like it a lot. Look at how cute he is. It's just how it goes. Uh, inside of it, I have some... Uh, oh, God, I forgot to bring it in here. Some of uh, the uh, throat coat uh, from Yogi Tea. It's very good. I like it a lot. Um... I have it a lot. It's uh, one of the things I like to have towards the end of the day, if I've got it. Um, the next question you might be asking yourself is, what's up with his face today? Um, clearly, I do not have any facial hair out right now. Um, one of my best friends is moving to another state. Uh, and by another state, I mean many, many, many states away. Uh, and so we had a going away party for him. His favorite joke is the uh, Joe, Joe who, Joe mama joke. Uh, and so it was Joe themed, which means that I dressed up as Joe Dirt for it. Everybody was a different Joe. Uh, it was a surprise to him. Uh, it was a great time, but um, it meant that I I cut you know the sideburns and uh, the goatee area down to be Joe Dirt. So I couldn't go to work looking like that after that. So I just went ahead and shaved it off. It'll be back uh, shortly. Uh, but until then, you get baby face me. There you go. Now, getting into what we are actually talking about today. What we are talking about is uh, end game kind of things. Uh, some things that I like a lot. They're not necessarily always end game kind of things, but things that I think are really, really fun, really, really cool, really, really great to get to play with uh, when you get the opportunity. And that is uh, the other rewards section of the DMG. Um, so obviously, there are standard sort of rewards for doing different things. There are items, money, that kind of thing, whenever you are able to complete a quest in D&D, you are given some kind of reward. Well, not always. Usually, you are given some kind of reward, whether that is an actual payment for something, a payment in the form of items, or simply maybe getting your name cleared from some crime that you were being accused of, whether or not you did commit it. I will not be a judge on that one, uh, because I, you know, they're D&D characters. They kind of find themselves in trouble a lot. Uh, if you will, if you think about it, D and D characters are often actually like five-year-olds with superpowers, and it just kind of accidentally happens sometimes, and that's the way it goes. Um, so, in the DMG, there's a section immediately following the magic items section and the treasures section, labeled other rewards, and that is what we're going to be talking about today, just a little bit here. We are going to just sort of do a quick overview of each one of them. We are not really going to get into it too much on each of them, uh, but we are going to take a little bit of a look at them, see what the different categories are, and go from there. See see what might fit your game. I say that they are end game-ish because they are things that normally you will get as you have progressed further into the story. Generally, you don't kick things off with one of them, but that's not to say you can't do that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of these, shall we? The first on the list here, there are four different categories that they present you with in here. Uh, those different categories are blessings, uh, charms, prestige, and boons. So we are going to start with blessings. Um, blessings are exactly what they sound like. They are minor blessings from otherworldly powers of different sorts, other, other planar things, gods, that kind of thing. Uh, they fall under, technically, supernatural gifts. Um, if you're looking in the table of contents of your DMG, you might find that you can't find blessings and charms. That is because they're under supernatural gifts. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, generally, characters are given a blessing for doing something particularly of import to that individual that is going to be giving them the blessing. Uh, that could be something like restoring a long forgotten shrine for a different for a deity that is there it could be um helping to reestablish the influence of some kind of eldritch being on the material plane it could be any number of things that you are doing uh some kind of essentially favor that you're carrying out for this being of higher power that they maybe can't carry out themselves because it is boots on the ground kind of work um and in doing so you have proven yourself to be one of the you know, quote-unquote, higher followers of uh, this individual. Um, and so they will bestow upon you some kind of blessing. These blessings uh, can range from pretty much any corner of the spectrum that you want. 
but they do give you some examples in the DMG. Those examples are, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm going to give you a couple of them to give you kind of an idea. Uh, the Blessing of Health. Your constitution increases by 2 up to a maximum of 22, so that increases both your constitution score and your constitution score maximum. So if you have a 16 in constitution and you get this, you get it turns into an 18 constitution and you still have the ability to go up to a 22 because your maximum is being increased as well. Normally your max is 20 if you don't know that for some reason because you're new to the game or something like that. Um, the Blessing of Magic Resistance. You have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Uh, that's a really, really great one. Uh, any race or creature that gets inherent magical resistance like that honestly kind of has a leg up on a lot of things and should, should be very, very happy that they do have that because it is a really, really, really good feature. Uh, the blessing of weapon enhancement. One non-magical weapon in your possession becomes a plus one weapon whenever you wield it. You sort of designate, ah, uh, my stick is going to be a plus one stick when I des when I wield it. So it's just kind of a stick for everybody else, but when you pick it up, it becomes a magic stick that can hit people extra well. Uh, those are the general kinds of blessings that you can get from this. Um, it is... Uh, actually, let me throw one more out there. The blessing of wound closure. The blessing grants you the benefit of the parry of wound closure. So, to kind of emphasize here, a lot of these will replicate uh, the effects of magic items, but make them a permanent feature of you as a character, which is really great. Constitution score is the manual of bodily health. Uh, magic, resistant, magic resistance is... I don't actually know an item off the top of my head that has that in it, but it would be like a ring of magic resistance where you get advantage on that kind of thing. Um, the blessing of weapon enhancement, obviously, plus one weapon. Blessing of Wound Closure says it right in the text for it, the pair after Wound Closure. Um, those things are things that make thematic sense for both your character and your otherworldly being that you are helping. That is the important part of that. It should be something that connects those two and makes perfect sense for the bridge between them. Uh, you don't want to necessarily get something that is not going to be useful to your character. It doesn't make any thematic sense for your character. Um, like, if I was a sorcerer who then got the uh, Blessing of Weapon Enhancement for helping the Goddess of Love reestablish something, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it really doesn't. I, I wouldn't be using weapons, and her whole vibe is not necessarily beating uh, the snot out of each other. So, take a look at it, make sure it makes sense, and go from there. But again, towards the end of a, an arc, at least with this, because it is something you have succeeded on and you're being granted by the god. Uh, you can be granted it going into something or coming out of something. Um, just at, if you are going into something and they're like, man, let me give you this little extra bit of power, and they inject you with a little bit of power. Um, next up are charms. Charms are a similar kind of thing, except not quite. <laughs> they're given to you in pretty much the same way. Uh, some kind of ultra powerful being. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be, and none of these have to be extra planar. I'm just keep continuing to use that because it's the easiest one. Some kind of extra planar being grants you a charm as a reward for doing something. Uh, same general concept, but the charm takes more of a physical form more often than not. Uh, as oftentimes the charm will have a number of charges, or it can be used once per rest, or something like that. Uh, if it has a number of charges that are expended, and then when the used up it disappears something like, like it it is a physical item that is not bound to you directly necessarily more often than not um again just run through a couple of them here uh charm of dark vision allows you to cast the dark vision spell as an action no components required once used three three times the charm goes away uh that is very self-explanatory uh charm of heroism allows you to give yourself the benefit of a potion of heroism as an action once you do so the charm vanishes from you uh, charm of the Slayer, one sword in your possession becomes a Dragon Slayer or Giant Slayer for the next nine days. The charm vanishes from you, and the weapon returns to normal at the end of those nine days. So, something that gives you a more temporary uh, magical bump, magical boost, that kind of thing, uh, that goes beyond the scope of maybe necessarily a normal magical item. However, it, it is temporary, and it will become... Uh, it, it is usually something that will then leave you and it, it doesn't have to be something that vanishes and disappears it can be something that you do retain um however you can only be used a certain number of times as opposed to the uh blessings which are more permanent than the charms here 
Uh, moving on from there, we have our prestige. Uh, our prestige here, these are not extra planar being based necessarily. They could be, um, but these are things that are way, way, way more tangible than anything else that we've talked about so far. These specifically uh, are things that you will get for doing quests more likely than not. Uh, the, they, are, they are the more traditional, I guess, sort of rewards that you get that are not money and weapons and uh, items and stuff like that. So, some of the possible things here, uh, they aren't necessarily locked into being these, but things that you could uh, get are things like letters of recommendation. Maybe you do a major favor for a, an army captain or something like that, and they go ahead and they write you a letter, uh, a recommendation to be heard at a higher court or something like that. Their word carries some weight there, so they actually pass you through a couple of layers of maybe a skill challenge where you have to persuade your way through things. You get auto passes for a few of those things for doing something for an NPC. Uh, special favors falls under the same general category. Uh, parcels of land, you can be given a keep somewhere uh, in the city. Uh, you could be given an apartment somewhere in the city. You could be given a farm outside of the city. Uh, you could be given a blank plot of land to do with as you wish in the middle of nowhere, uh, miles and miles and miles away from civilization. Uh, really kind of anything like that. Uh, going right along with that are strongholds and vehicles, that kind of thing. Um, you can be given stuff that is not necessarily just worth its weight in literal gold or worth its weight in blood. Um, and uh, the other one that I want to hit here is training and special rights because those are two that are very, very interesting. Training uh, allows you to gain proficiencies or it allows you to uh, potentially even gain um, uh, ability score uh, improvements. There we go. Uh, feats, something like that. Special rights grant you special access to different things maybe. Um, which is a really, really interesting and really, really cool uh, little feature that you could get. Um, and when I say special rights slash special access, it it goes beyond necessarily the letter of recommendation to just kind of get you through a door somewhere. This is like a, oh, now that you have done this thing, you are officially given access to the restricted section of the library, something along those lines. Um, and finally, we come to our boons. These are technically called epic boons. Um, they are technically according to the book reserved for level 20 characters who cares what the book says on that one uh these are things that i think are really really awesome to give to players as they walk their way into the final final fight i think that they are really really useful to be handed out then more specifically than anything else however if you are running a campaign up to level 20 and then beyond uh either by continuing past um the level thresholds uh, bound within official 5e material and using a third party supplement to go uh, level up past that or you hit level 20 and you just want to keep going uh, epic boons are your friend for that as well um, epic boons technically are in place to replace level ups um, in those in that top level area which is why technically they're reserved for level 20 characters again however they're just really cool things if you want to hand them out to your players as they come into the final, final stages of your campaign. This is really where the end game stuff sort of comes into play. Um, let's take a look at some of them. <clears throat> because, uh, why not? These are in line with the blessings in that they are a more permanent part of you. Uh, but they are the blessings turned up kind of to 11. So, you know expect that they're they're built for 20th level characters and they're built to be used to fight you know cr 25 plus monsters so gen that's the general idea here uh boon of fortitude uh your hit point maximum increases by 40 yet it's essentially the tough feat again if you've already taken the tough feat um or the tough feat to begin with if you haven't taken the tough feat uh really really fantastic kind of thing uh, to just sort of be able to pick up uh, Boon of High Magic. You gain one ninth level spell slot provided that you already have one. That's two ninth level spells between long rests. Uh, permanently. Just just permanently. Assuming you get to uh, that level and are able to cast those spells. Um, jumping down forward here. 
Uh, Boon of Magic Resistance. Advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Again, these are in a similar vein as the Blessings. However, usually they're ramped up a little bit, obviously, with the 40 health point or hit point increase and that kind of thing. Um, this one just happens to be the same as one of the Blessings. Uh, Boon of Perfect Health. You are immune to all diseases and poisons, and you have advantage on constitution saving throws. This is something that you could pick up if you uh, have skipped Warcaster and made it to level 20 as a spellcaster. Um, if, if that is the case, uh, that's kind of crazy, but good for you. Um, I don't know that I would have been able to do that, quite frankly. Um, let's see. Uh, Boon of True Sight. You have a True Sight at a range of 60 feet. I'm trying to find one that is uh, a little bit more... Uh, there we go. Okay. Boon of Spell Recall. You can cast any spell you know or have prepared without expending a spell slot. Once you do so, you can't use this boon again until you finish a long rest. So, I wanted to find one that was like that specifically because I wanted to emphasize the point that you do not have to have them be universally always on. They can be things that are a one-time use kind of thing. Um, however, a lot of them are kind of always on. Boon of Skill Proficiency. You gain proficiency in all skills. Straight up and down. Um, so, Epic Boons are really, really cool, really, really fun. A good way to kind of capstone a character, in my mind, if you are going up to that point in a campaign. If you're going past that point in a campaign, then they're really cool things to be able to add on as you continue past that, and you become, essentially, demigods as you go forward. Um, and uh, I think that is just a whole lot of fun. Uh, and I honestly wish that more people, uh, one, knew about it, because I wish more people read the DMG. But two, I wish that more people used it, because I think that it is a really, really phenomenal uh, sort of resource within uh, the, D the DMG that people don't access nearly as much as they really should. Um, but that is everything I have to talk to you guys about in regard to that. Moving on to the shows we had today and tomorrow, we have, in no particular order here, for Monday, uh, The Paper Dungeon, Chromatic Dice, Beyond the Realms, Unprepared Casters, who just ran a nine-hour battle royale to raise $26,000 for, uh, I believe it's the Trans Lifeline. Uh, they did such a great job. I I applaud them. I wish them the best. I know a few of the people that were involved in it. I'm so, so proud of them. Um, I'm, I'm so, so happy that they got to do that. Anyway, I'm Fairy Casters. Greetings, adventurers. Bards of New York. Hapless heroes. Iron adventurers. Cast party. Three black halflings. Hello from the Magic Tavern. King Leo D&D. &D, which I was told uh, that their uh, code for us, the discount code for actually this mug, because I am a terrible person and I left it sitting on my desk. Uh, this mug here, uh, which is uh, T T A and N D capital D, um, is still active. You can get half off that mug in their store. Go check it out. Um, or it's like eight dollars off that mug, and it's a fifteen dollar mug, something like that. Um, Antiheroes Anonymous uh, and Top of the Round. And then Tuesday, we have Diary of a Dragon Pit, Star Wars First Resistance, Dungeons and Daddies, Bombarded, Heck of a D&D, Glass Cannon, and the Queer Questers. Please go check them out. Let them know that I am the one that sent you because, again, someday somebody's going to say something to me about it, and I think it's going to be hysterical. Uh, but until we get to that point, that is everything I have for you guys today. So thank you very much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check out the link in the description of this episode. Um, I have never had a clean dismount from that, I don't think. I always go um and think to try and see if there's something else. There's never anything else. That's everything I have for you. So with all that said, don't forget, everybody. Drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling. <laughs>